and all my pillows. <clears throat> okay. There's never a dull moment. Never. Never. Never a dull moment in our lives. Mm -hmm. It's never boring, you guys. So, um, you guys, yesterday, you know how Cash wasn't feeling well. He just wasn't, like, he just wasn't right. I was like, he's not feeling well. Something's up with him. He is not okay. So, something is wrong with my sweet baby Cash. I'm going to expand so just people can see him laying he's around. Got a, yeah, there's a, he's got a little he's got his head on a pillow. Something is not right with him. So, we are going to have like it's not going to be a super short show but it's going to be a shorter than usual show and i am going to try to get him we're going to my husband and i are going to try to get him into like a m or something today because he is not well and i will give um no it's not it's not a tick bite or anything like that um it's definitely not that but um but uh, i will give updates to the insiders and the locals today and let you guys know what is going on Okay. And so, you can do that. You can join yeah. insiders and locals. You should totally do that. That was what I was going to tell everybody to do today. But yeah, he's thank you for the prayers. Thank you. Yeah. And keep yeah. him coming because he's such a love. Um, my so, sidekick, you guys. He's my sidekick. Yeah. It's been a long night. <sighs> Poor baby. My Look baby. at him. My baby boy. I'm so tired. I know. He's, he's sick. He's, he's six sick. years old. He's six, which is kind of old. I know that sounds weird for people who don't have large breed dogs, but um, he's, yeah, he's kind of old. They only, their life expectancy is like nine, eight, nine years. So he's, in, he's older for a Dane, which is weird. I know that's weird for people because usually like six is young. It's not, which is so, it's getting to be so exhausting as a Dane owner. I know that sounds very selfish, but I'm like, I just, it's, I just want him to stick around for like ever because I yeah. love him so much. And no, I'm not a grandma yet, you guys. What the hell? <laughs> I know. She is still like at four o'clock yesterday afternoon, she had been there for 24 hours and she's like, they finally let me order food. I'm so hungry. And so oh my gosh. She got food. We were about ready to just like send her some some food because we were just I'm, I can't even imagine. But they are, I don't know, they're still working and trying to figure out like what route they're going to take with her. So no, no baby yet. Wow. No baby. So I know there's so much going on in the Clark household. <laughs> you do have a lot going, a lot on. going on. Yeah. So that's happening. So anyway, happy Friday, everybody. <laughs> so oh, Ari Ariane, Ariane Hansman, Aww. you're a vet. Thank you. Oh I may gosh. actually ask you some questions. Yes. Is that an insider? Is Ariane an insider? If you could, if Ariane Hamzit, Hamzmit, if you are an insider, please, uh, or supporter on locals, that would be super reach helpful. Out. I would then, love to hear from you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Or send an email to chicks on the right rule at Gmail. And then I can forward it to, yes, um, yes, yes. I can forward it and then you guys can get connected. So that would that. be great. She would love Fantastic. to have that on Thank here. You. I'd love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, all right. So we're going to um, try to get to some news. I'm going to keep this view because that way I can also keep an eye on cash since you're not looking directly at him. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we can both see him in our little camera view. Uh, so we're just going to have like sleepy. a wide angle today. <laughs> Very sleepy. Because look at him. He's a big baby. He's, He's a, a big, big sweet boy. boy. I'm so sleepy. Big sweet boy. No. Um, okay, so the auto, the the three big uh, automakers in Detroit, Stellantis, which makes we just looked this up because we were like, who the hell is Stellantis? Maserati, Peugeot, Fiat. They had Jeep, Jeep Dodge, other yeah. Chrysler, mm -hmm. and then Ford and GM. Uh, their workers, 13,000 people have gone on strike because you guys, they want a 40% raise, 40% and they want 32 day or 32 hour work week. So they want three day weekend mm -hmm. and a 40% raise. And that's why they're on strike. And, and, so, and they want their pensions back, right? They want their, pensions yeah, they want back. full pensions instead mm -hmm. of this ridiculous 401k thing. I mean, why should they have just a 401k? I mean, like everybody else, God. come on, man. I mean, it's just, yeah. I, I'm sorry, but that's ridiculous. 40% and... raise is ridiculous. Yeah. Like who gets a 40? Yeah, this is insane. So now, that, just, that just means that like car prices are going to go up even more. Right. Who has bought a car lately and they just seriously cried when they went they're to ridiculous. the- 
it's insane. Like, I mean, I just bought a car recently cause I had to, cause my old Tahoe was like literally breaking down. It was, it was old and it was, and I wanted to keep it so bad. You guys, I love my old Tahoe. I love it. I love it. <laughs> cause it doesn't and tell you what to do. It says I'm, I have a new Kia and I'm sorry if you guys love Kias, it's fine. I mean, it's fine, but I don't like it. I don't like it cause it tells me what to do. I hate new cars. I hate them. <laughs> Cause they all tell you what to do. And they're just like, do you need a coffee break? No, I don't need a damn coffee break. <laughs> Quit telling me what to do. Like you have to turn all that crap off. I just want like a 1978 Cutlass Supreme. That's what <laughs> I want. Something like that. So that doesn't have like 400,000 miles on it. You can't find something like that nowadays. Like I just want an old car that won't break down, you know, yeah. like the new cars just piss me off every, and they're all so expensive. Why do you have to pay a mortgage for a car? Right. Why? You're out of, well, and it's just going to get worse. It's going to get way, way worse. Now the big three did like their, you know, the negotiate in the negotiating process, they have offered half that. So they're basically saying, how about a 20% raise? I don't know what they're saying about the work week or the pension, but they did offer a 20% raise. Um, and they're saying that if this strike lasts 10 days, it will cost our full economy $6 billion. So it's, everything is just out of control out of control now yeah. the interesting thing is that um this could actually impact joe biden negatively because he's supposed to be all union guy right and so mm -hmm. if this doesn't work out well then who knows how that will impact the race but that is a thing that is happening another thing that we wanted to mention is that vivek is now on tiktok five days after saying that tiktok is basically a scourge on humanity and it's fentanyl it's digital fentanyl um but apparently he hung out with jake paul and did some tiktok dances with him and has now decided thanks to jake paul's wisdom that he's got to be on tiktok if he wants to reach the younger folk and so now vivek is saying it's super important and i'm going to be on it like all the time he's going to be making constant tiktoks so yeah is he all right I no, he's fine. Him. He's just, okay. he's just adjusting. He's fine. <laughs> yeah. I, this is the thing. I, I think it's because he's like, Oh, well, this is where all the kids are. This mm -hmm. is what Jake Paul said. Why, why I want to be where the children are. <laughs> <laughs> this is just so bizarre. So he's listening to Jake Paul, right? Jake Paul, Jake Paul. Yeah. Who is like no, for his political savvy. I know. <laughs> Isn't he the guy that was like the prankster? He was the prankster at first and then he became a, a MMA fighter, right? I think it was Logan Paul that oh, was that's the Logan? original prankster. And Jake. now they're both like wrestlers or something. I don't even know. Like I can't keep up they're with MMA them. kids or something. Yeah. MMA boys. Yeah. It's just bizarre. But mm -hmm. I it doesn't look particularly good on Vivek that he's saying and crediting this new political strategy. He's my political Jake advisor. Paul. Jake Paul is my political advisor. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not a good look. I don't yeah. think, I mean, that's just my personal opinion. Your mileage yeah. may vary on that. Yeah. A lot of people are, are, listen, a lot of people that said that they don't use TikTok are using TikTok or they don't like TikTok or use actually use it or that it's a scourge on humanity actually yeah. use it. So, you know, it is yeah. what it is. I mean, obviously I use it. So uh, I, yeah, I'm I not mean, judging him for using it. I'm judging him for using it five days after he said it's yeah. like the most terrible thing ever. <laughs> I mean, it still is a scourge on humanity. <laughs> I mean, all social media is really. Mm -hmm. It is. You're right. <laughs> hey, uh, yesterday we recorded a new episode of um, our show with Zach Abraham from Bulwark Capital. We recorded a new episode that's going to be dropping on Sunday. And this one was, remember how earlier in the week we played a clip that was very depressing from Charles Payne talking yes. about like how all the signs that he looks at, economic indicators that he looks at to see the strength of the economy, everything's looking really, really bad. And that's a direct counter narrative to what the White House is trying to tell everybody right now, which is like strongest economy ever. Bidenomics is the greatest. Like everything is awesome. It's not awesome. And Zach agrees with Charles Payne and expanded on that like a lot. Um, and so it's a really interesting episode, not just because of his insights about that, but also because he talks about how he can personally help you all. If you would like to talk with him 
about your personal situation, he will do that with you. Um, and if you want to get more information about that, you can call 866-779-RISK. That's 866-779-RISK. Or you can go to knowyourriskradio.com. Um, investment advisory services are offered through Trek Financial, LLC, and SEC Registered Investment Advisor. So if you want to check out that episode, it will drop on Sunday. I'm not sure what time, but definitely by the end of the day, Sunday, you can check it out there. So definitely do that, knowyourriskradio.com. Um, um, okay, let's get to some videos because, again, we're going to try to keep this show a little bit shorter today just so that we can make sure that you are giving your full attention to Cashy Cash Cash. Um, cash. Biden spoke yesterday about the economy. And you guys, there were some moments that we are going to share that are just bat shit. <laughs> Um, the first one was one of those moments where he's kind of reading the teleprompter, but then he gets sidetracked or maybe the, maybe there was a glitch in the teleprompter and then he just all of a sudden switches gears and then goes on a tangent that has nothing to do with anything. And here is that. MAGA Republican in Congress also trying to undo the progress we made to make it, make getting, uh, you know, look, what... What I was able to do in the, what they call the G7 among the NATO countries and European countries, I was able to get them to all agree, and then around the world, all the democracies, agree that we were going to have a global minimum tax on corporates, on corporations. Me what? <laughs> what was <laughs> On corporates. We're going to have a global minimum tax on corporates. I... Mm -hmm. I <laughs> don't right. even know nobody knows what he's saying he doesn't no know what one he's knows. saying he, look at his no. face <laughs> right now <laughs> look at it right the second you guys that's our president everybody that's our president right there we in danger girl <laughs> all of us <laughs> well and then in a, i mean this is just it's becoming just amazing to me the extent to which he will just lie without caring that he's lying and and he has to know in the back of his mind that like it's very verifiable that he's lying <laughs> and so why he continues to do it is just mind-boggling but he just flat out lies here i'll just let you hear it and then we can discuss our democracy is under attack and we got to fight for it i taught at the university of pennsylvania for four years and i used to teach political theory what Okay. <laughs> he guys, did, it's just not true. It's he didn't not. do that. He never taught there. He didn't teach that at all. Um, that was an entirely different person, a set of people. It wasn't him. <laughs> he didn't because do that. He's never taught mm -hmm. a single class. No. He has never instructed a class in his life. No. And he just told everybody that he taught at the University of Pennsylvania for four years. <laughs> for four whole years. He didn't do it. Everybody's like, he just shit his pants when he, when he said that. <laughs> I mean, you guys. He what didn't in do the that. hell? Yeah. And, 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 you know, and this is the thing. They're going to ask, what's his name? What's the, what's the guy's name? The the press secretary dude that gets out there and lies. And it did Kirby? That. Kirby. They're going to ask Kirby, hey, so why did he lie about teaching for four years? And he's going to he's going to say some stuff. He should. Well, I mean. He did. He may not have taught, but he like he he may have visited the campus, and then he talked to some students, and he said some educational things. And so and he was honored to be there. He was he was so honored, and so that just you know by osmosis makes him a professor, a full professor, a full one, a full and he's one. probably he's tenured actually. Is, like you can just this, want to be. Gonna, if you can spell I, University of Pennsylvania, you're like automatically a tenured professor. They're going to spin <laughs> this. They're going to, I mean, they'll spin yeah. this too. And then Democrats will let this go. They're totally okay with, and it's true, Diana, let me be clear. Let me yes. be clear. I mean, this is the thing. They'll spin all of this. He has lied more than any president in the mm -hmm. history of the United States, right? He's the biggest, he's the liar in chief. And they will, they're totally okay with it. They're totally okay. They're a bunch of liars themselves. My God. It's, it's unreal. It's crazy. 
It gets even better, though. This last clip, you guys. Oh, my God. Okay. So we've shown millions, it feels like, clips of him in various speeches over the course of his presidency when he does that, either the the whisper thing, which is super creepy on its own, or when he does the angry scream. And the angry scream is the one that's super freaky, right? Like whispering is creepy enough, but like the angry scream when it comes out of nowhere that's like on another level of creepiness. And I have never seen him be more psychotic than he is in this clip. I think he's talking about drug prices. You guys watch. You're going to pay somewhere between 20 and 40 percent less than those other countries. Same exact drug made by the same exact company. Look at his face. <laughs> What in the world? Oh my God, he is psychotic. Right? I mean, that was, I'm just going to like, look at this. <laughs> what is he doing? I have to play that part again because it's you so have weird. To, we have to hear it again. 40% less than those other countries. Same exact drug <laughs> made by the same exact company. He didn't even know what he was going to say. I mean, the that same exact company. That's not normal. That is freaking insane. That's dementia right there. Yeah. That's just full on dementia right there. Yeah. Oh my God. Luke, thank you so much. Luke says, good morning, beautiful Ms. Miriam, Ms. Amy Joe. Everyone should watch Glenn Beck's Wednesday night special about Zelensky's corruption. It is a real eye opener. Oh, I got to watch that. Okay. We oh, love okay. us and Glenn Beck. Yeah. And Zelensky. Right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, it was kind of a, uh, what's the word when like something is just not as big of a deal as it's hyped up to be? A nothing um, burger. You hate that phrase, nothing burger. I do hate that. It it's a nothing burger. <laughs> uh -huh. But what is the word where it's just kind of like a letdown? Uh, a letdown. It's kind of a letdown. It's like a. What's it? What's, the, what's there's the word, a word for that? A letdown, a nothing burger. A what's, what's when the you're word? like hyped for something to happen and then it just doesn't like happen a exactly. Buzzkill insignificant <sighs> what is the word anticlimactic i think that might be yeah i think that might be, yeah, think that might okay, be it there you yes go. thank you guys flop. there there you go done yes underwhelmed we're getting lots yeah. of work so many synonyms this morning you guys are like a, a thesaurus I, know. I love it seriously yeah fantastic so that's kind of how i felt when hunter biden was indicted on the gun charges yesterday and so yeah. we've got a clip from jesse waters kind of just going through what the charges are here he is fox news alert the president's son hunter biden has been indicted on gun charges a colt cobra 38 special was illegally purchased then dumped in a dumpster next to a school it was lost and the bidens blamed an illegal alien count one Lying on a gun form. He said he wasn't addicted when he was. Count two, making false statements to a gun dealer. Again, lying about his drug addiction. And count three, for owning a firearm while on drugs. Hunter's facing a maximum prison sentence of 25 years and a three-quarter million dollar fine. Democrats have run on gun control for decades, and now that Hunter Biden's been charged with gun crimes, Democrats don't care, as long as it doesn't hurt Biden's re-election. Oh, the Justice know? Department. Yeah, I didn't think I have that. <laughs> yeah, they totally don't care. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Just the, the double standard there. They're all about yep. like the gun control. They're all about all that. And, and the the drug thing, too, is just so interesting. How we, And the lying again with the lying. But these charges are like whatever compared to the actual stuff that he's done when it comes to taxes and like all the influence peddling. That's the stuff that we want to see charges about. You know what I mean? Yeah. This gun stuff like, OK, that's that's great. Nothing's going to happen. But like, God, I mean, the other stuff is so much huger. It you is. Know? It is huger. I know. But it's like it scratches the surface. It kind of like pulls him in. Yeah. You know what I mean, so we could get him on more stuff, I guess. But it's something. It's just something to show this guy is the biggest, most, he's the, he's a colossal loser. Yeah. He's a big fat loser. And the mm -hmm. fact that so many people on the left are still continuing this ridiculous line, this phrase that they use over and over again. Well, there's no evidence pointing to Joe Biden being involved in his son's business dealings. There's no evidence. Here is an earlier clip of Jesse. I, I don't, this feels unscripted. And the fact that this is probably off the cuff by Jesse is so good because he just goes through the entire list of, of evidence. And it's, it's beautiful. Check this out. 
So uh, Putin's billionaire buddy wires the Biden family three and a half billion dollars. And then they sit down for dinner with Joe Biden. And then Biden leaves her off the sanctions list twice. Right there, you could open an impeachment inquiry. Or how about when Joe Biden flies his son to China, he comes back with a bucket of cash and then gets on the, hey, guys, you better pay up the rest or my dad's going to get revenge on you. And what do you know? Joe Biden starts writing the communist Chinese guy's daughter's recommendations to get into Brown. And then they grease the regulatory process so the Chinese can buy an American car company. Oh, yeah. And then Hunter gets that diamond for about seventy five thousand dollars that he lost. Because if Malia Obama got a diamond and then President Obama went soft on the country that gave it to him, I'm sure that would not be a big deal at all. And then who else do we have? We have uh, Biden flies his son down to Mexico City. Hunter meets with the president of Mexico and Carlos Slim, comes back with money and then complains. Guys, I've gotten all of your clients into the White House to meet with my dad and you haven't paid me a dime. Where's the cash? They can't answer those three situations. So I can't wait till they have to answer about the burner phones, the 20 shell companies, or Joe Biden on a voicemail saying, "Uh, son, I read the Times piece about your shady deals in China. You're in the clear. Now, how would he even know if he was in the clear if he didn't know what his son did? And how do you not know what your son did if you call your son every day for the last 20 years? Hey, son, how'd you get the Porsche Panorama? Hey, son, where did you get all the money to take me to St. Croix eight times in a row? Did you know that the Bidens vacationed in St. Croix, notorious tax shelter, eight seasons in a row? I mean, Joe didn't pay for that. That money was coming from Hunter or from Jimmy. And Jimmy was putting his brother up in a nice Naples resort that he purchased right off the coast. Who paid for that? Jimmy's a scam artist. He doesn't do anything. And then all of a sudden, well, he didn't do anything to return the money. Well, he didn't pop the Chinese spy balloon, covered up for the lab leak, and covering up for all the countries that have been paying his family. So they're going to have to answer for all of this. There's a mountain of evidence that they can't confront, and they keep on saying this is the best thing that's ever happened to the Biden White House. I don't think Joe Biden believes that. That was pretty beautiful. Right? I mean, he just was, like, going off. Yeah, he wasn't... That wasn't like, I don't think that was practice. I think he was I don't either. Off. And, you know, Jessica Tarlov was just like sitting next to him going, but you're being mean to a drug addict. <laughs> He's a drug addict. Come oh, my on God. Drugs. Jesse, that's just mean. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's just, that's a lot of shady shit. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you can't just shit. be like, oh, there's no evidence at all. No, no, there's none. There's none at all. I can't see any. I don't know where it is. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, You guys, the world is freaking bat crap. China is hoarding food. None of this means anything good. I hate to tell you that. I hate to put it in such stark terms. But there are some people predicting food shortages right here at home. And that's kind of terrifying, which is why... We always want to remind you that 4patriots.com, the number 4, 4patriots.com is a great place to stock up on emergency food kits for yourself and your entire family. You can do like a 72-hour kit. You can do a three-month kit. You can do a full year's worth of food, and it stores for 25 years. It can stay completely usable for 25 years in storage. So it's, you know, once you get it, it's not like you constantly have to restock it. You are good to go for the long haul. And it's just a nice sort of um, peaceful feeling. You know what I mean? It's a real sense of security (laughs) when you have that on hand and you know you and your family are prepared for any possible disaster. So just go to 4patriots.com. Use code CHICKS to get 10% off any purchase of 4 Patriots survival food off of any other of their fantastic items. That's the number 4patriots.com. Use code Chicks. Chicks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, if you're wondering for the reason for my name today, it's just the lamest attempt I had today. Uh, it's all I could muster. And it is in honor of Jamie Raskin, who is, by the way, growing his hair back, which that's exciting, right? 
that's okay. sort of exciting. Right. Yeah, sure. Um, and so Jake Tapper, to his credit, sometimes Jake accidentally journalisms. <laughs> and it's we got to give him credit where it's due uh, for his efforts to honestly journalism. And he does that with Jamie Raskin. So we, you recall yesterday, if you were tuning in yesterday, we played a clip of Nancy Pelosi being asked the question by Anderson Cooper. Do you think Kamala is the best choice in a running mate for Joe Biden? She danced. She danced around that question, like all the way around it, all the way around it, and just did not want to answer it directly. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so it was pathetic and it went viral because she clearly doesn't believe that Kamala is the best choice. Otherwise, she would have said, of course she is. You know what I mean? And so uh, it, Jamie Raskin gets interviewed by Jake Tapper. Jake shows him that clip and then asks him the same question. And Jamie also dances. And so Jake Tapper gets kind of journalism-y. And here's where that picks up. Right, wants to shut down the you, government. You actions. are doing what Speaker Pelosi did, which is not answering the question. Do you think Kamala Harris is the best running mate for President Biden? Is it, well, well obviously she, she gave the right answer. That's President Biden's choice. And I think she's an excellent running mate uh, for President Biden. Um, you know, I don't know what more needs to be <laughs> said about that. Obviously, people um, are still trying to, you know, throw presidential politics um, into turmoil. But um, President Biden and Vice President Harris are running on an excellent record. One point two trillion dollar investment in infrastructure, the Inflation Reduction Act, record investment in climate action. We've reduced prescription drug prices. And so there's a very strong policy record to run on there. And I, I want to resist the tendency to try to trivialize all politics by making it just about personalities. It's, it's not a, no one's making it about personalities. I mean, like, it's just a simple question. Do you think Kamala Harris is the best running mate for President Biden? <laughs> You've said she's excellent. That's farther than Speaker Pelosi went. But do you think she's the, I, I'm not trying to throw anything into turmoil. I, I actually think it's a pretty <clears throat> simple question. Do you think Kamala Harris is the best running mate for President Biden? Yes or no? I mean, but I don't know what else I can say other than she you would say be yes. an excellent running mate <laughs> and an excellent <laughs> vice president. Um, I don't know whether President Biden has named his uh, running mate. We're going to a convention uh, next summer. It's uh, huh. a, you know, a year away from now. Um, and we're going to go through that process. So, I mean, the, uh, you say, I don't know why you can say the answer is you could say yes. You could say yes. I think Kamala Harris is the best vice president and the best running mate for President Biden. That, that, that's the, the answer you could be giving right now. Yes, she is. So I've not seen any public opinion polling. Um, oh you know, my I, you God. might be a stronger vice presidential uh, running mate than her or me or anybody else. I don't know who else, if you're talking about the polling, but I will tell you as a matter of substance and public policy, she'd be an excellent choice. Wow. And she and the president have done an excellent job. Okay, first of all, what country are you living in? They have not done an excellent job. Oh and then he's God. like, I've got to see the polling to see what I should say. To see I what I think? Uh-huh. What? Yeah, because I can't I can't actually speak to what I think. I can't speak on my own. I have not no unless I know how it's going to poll. Uh-huh. I have no original thoughts. I yeah. mean, I guess we should give him credit for being honest, mm -hmm. right? Honest I'm... about the fact that he can't think without being told how it'll what help him politically. Right. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Because, I mean, let's face wow. it. He thinks he also thinks that she sucks. I mean, everybody knows she sucks. Everybody right? thinks everybody. she sucks. Because yeah. she sucks. <laughs> and so does he. And the only reason that he's saying that, oh, they've done an excellent job is because he's been told to say that. Mm -hmm. Which he said in a roundabout way. I need to be told what to say. Yeah. And they're telling me to say they've done an excellent job. Their policies are great. Bullshit. <laughs> they're terrible. <laughs> They're, they're absolutely horrific. We are careening off a cliff in this country. Um, unfortunately, the fight that we told you about yesterday that's taking place between Kevin McCarthy and Matt Gates continues to heat up. Um, first, you're going to see a clip of Kevin McCarthy, I think, very nicely handling a reporter who is pressing him on this whole impeachment inquiry. And he lets her have it. And I think it's perfect. What impeachment inquiry is to do is to get answers to questions. Are you concerned about all the stuff that was just recently learned? Do you have any concern? Have you asked the White House any questions? Yes. 
Okay. Do you agree that, do you believe the president lied to the American public when he said he'd never talked to his son about business dealings? Yes or no? It's all right. I can't answer that. You, you can't answer that? Do you believe when they said the president went on conference calls? Do you believe that happened? That's what the testimony says. Okay. Yeah. Do you believe the president went to Cafe Milano and had dinner with the, with the clients of Hunter Biden, who believes he got those clients because he was selling the brand? That's what the testimony okay. says. Do you believe Hunter Biden, when you saw the video of him driving a Porsche, that he got $143,000 to buy that Porsche the next day? Do you believe the $3 million from the Russian oligarch that was transferred to the shell companies that the Bidens controlled after the dinner from Cafe Milano took place? So the testimony. Okay, then I go back. Do you think the president lied that he... When but he is said, that an impeachable? Is lying an impeachable? Well, you want, you want to know... I'm not saying impeachment. All I'm saying is I would like to know answer to these questions. The American public ought to know. And that's what impeachment inquiry provides. It's so funny. Is lying impeachable? I don't know. Lying to Congress is is a really bad thing, isn't it? I mean, well, you, it's perjury, right? right? You go, you go. I mean, that's you get in real big trouble for that. So it's like, which is like, why is, they need to subpoena him. They uh -huh. need to subpoena him is and let lying. him say that he lies on everything else. Every why single we thing. Think he's telling the truth ever. Every single thing he lies about mm -hmm. is lying impeachable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like. I, well, I mean, I don't know, lady. You you believe this guy? You believe what? It's 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 remarkable how people still believe anything that comes out of Joe Biden's mouth. It is. It's absolutely I incredible. Mean, he's he's talking about being there at Ground Zero the the day after. He's a freaking liar. He did, on he, everything that, and it's like the dumbest stuff where he, he just does, doesn't need to lie. Yeah, I mean, it's just it, at this point, it's every day. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. So, like I said, though, the fight between McCarthy and Gates is getting to be ugly. And here is an update on that. Oh, it's appreciated. The House Republican conference behind closed doors today sounded a bit like this. <laughs> OK, I'm not going to bring those actual nasty words into your living room. But Speaker Kevin McCarthy held a closed door meeting with House Republicans that was intense and became heated. Three sources in the room tell CNN that McCarthy grew frustrated at the threats to oust him as speaker. At one point, McCarthy said, the, said, quote, move the effing motion, referencing recent threats from Republican Congressman Matt Gates, calling for a motion on the House floor to remove McCarthy as speaker, to which Gates responded, quote, how about just move the effing spending bills? Obviously, nobody said effing, but you catch the drift. After the meeting, reporters caught up with McCarthy to ask him about these threats from Congressman Gates. Threats don't matter, and sometimes people do those things because of personal things, and that, that's all fine. I don't walk away from a battle. I knew changing Washington would not be easy. I knew people would fight or try to hold leverage for other things. I'm going to continue to just to focus on what's the right thing to do for the American people. And you know what? If it takes a fight, I'll have a fight. Fight being a different F word than the one Mr. McCarthy deployed away from the cameras today. Here's how Congressman Matt Gates responded to the meetings, talking exclusively with CNN's Manu Raju. I'm concerned for the speaker that he seems to be a little rattled and unhinged in a time when we need focus and strong effort. Uh, whether or not McCarthy faces a motion to vacate is within his own hands. All he has to do is come into compliance with the deal we made in January. Let us recall, McCarthy is facing multiple major battles, not only these threats to oust him, but also substantively a possible government shutdown as members of his party are threatening to not pass the short-term spending bill that McCarthy wants them to, that would keep the government running past September 30th. And, of course, there's the impeachment inquiry into President Biden that McCarthy launched without presenting any concrete evidence yet that Biden personally financially benefited from his son Hunter's business dealings and without bringing that to a floor vote after saying 12 days beforehand that he would have a floor vote to demonstrate how serious the matter is. Then, of course, there's... How is he changing Washington? That's what I want to know. How's he doing that? How's McCarthy? Kevin? Doing that? Yeah. Um, how is he doing that? Because I mean, <laughs> I would, I would actually um, argue that Gates is probably more of a, a person that would be changing Washington than McCarthy. I, I totally agree. And I think Matt Gates on this is right. Like the things that he's fighting for are right. the right things to fight for. Yeah. They changed but just, Washington. But, but 
does he have enough support on his side to make actual changes? This is always the this is always the problem, right? Is that there's never enough Republicans can never all unite on issues to solve problems. And this is where we struggle as a party. So there's not enough people that are in agreement on the in the Republican Party with Matt Gates, and there's not enough with Kevin. So we just don't get anything done ever. I hear you. I totally hear you. But my but my point is that if you want real actual change to the things, the way that things are done. Gates is suggesting the actual changes, whereas McCarthy's yeah. he's saying that he wants change. There's no change there. It's just doing crap the way that it's always been done. So, yeah. I mean, you're yeah, going to have a temporary, you know, keep the government open again. What it's the like, hell? What? It's like this is so what? It's like I'm yawning at, at the crap that you're suggesting. At least Gates is saying, let's do th some things differently with the single bills and, and the, the thing, all the things that he's suggesting. That's actual change. Right. That's cleaning house. That's doing some stuff differently. That's that's doing. I, I just I don't see what McCarthy's doing that's any different than what we've done a million times before. All right. So I had an opportunity. I hope a lot of people did uh, as well to watch the full Megyn Kelly Trump interview. There were parts of it. I mean, we showed some teasers of that yesterday, which were awesome. She is awesome. I mean, she is just like one of the last great journalists to me. She asks mm -hmm. the question. She is fearless. And I love that about her. There were, there were a couple points where I was like, don't let him lie. You're letting him lie. And you're not pushing back on that. But then at the very end, she explained why she does that, that she has to think about in real time where to fact check him and where to just let him go and assume that the audience will fact check him because she wants to keep it moving. Right. Like, so there's a whole process that she has to consider and it made a lot of sense to me. She's just phenomenal at her job. And it was just interesting to watch the two of them interact. She was on with Newsmax to explain their relationship um, and to kind of just tie the bow around the whole interview. And she gives him a lot of credit, which he deserves for doing the dang interview in the first place. Agreed. Here she is. Dot com slash Megan Kelly and wherever you get your podcast. Megan, good. That quite that interaction. I listened to the whole podcast, say your whole interview, that interaction. Boy, you know, you're a tough interviewer. And, and, and to your credit, that was you did journalism today, Megan. Yeah, well, that's the thing. So I like Trump. You know, our relationship is complicated a little, I think, on both ends. Right. Because because of everything that happened around that question, and that debate, uh, it's all laid out in my book, Settle for More. Uh, but anyway, it, it's a little complicated, but I think we both respect each other. And it's it's like, I don't know, kind of like two silverback gorillas. Right. Because <laughs> he knows even though I like him, I have to ask him tough <laughs> questions. That's my job. And I know that even though he's inclined to like me, he's still ticked off about that debate question. So there's a little friction behind our relationship. And I think it works on television, frankly. Uh, it's a dynamic that works. And so it, at times it got a little contentious. But overall, I think we have a begrudging respect for one another. And as you know, as a journalist, I'll take it. I'd much rather people respect me than love me. I'm not a politician. So that's the game I'm in. And he did fine. You know, he look, he knew I wasn't going to softball it. He knew that I was going to go to places like the criminal indictments, which, frankly, he shouldn't be talking about at all. But he's chosen to. And not only did he give me the interview, he sat for longer. It was supposed to be 45 minutes. He gave me an hour 20. So he didn't have to do that. He's not like President Baseman, who's constantly hiding from the media. Not that they would ask him any tough questions. He got out there. And even after the contentious exchanges, we had a lot of like kind of heartfelt moments about Melania, about his future. So all the credit in the world to him for doing. It. See, yes. it's kind of like we were talking about yesterday. It's like they they disagree on some stuff and they've had some contentious moments in the past. For sure. And, and then they just were like they were cool with one another. Yeah. I think everybody could learn a lot from that. I think well, that journal, every journalist out there should be following her lead because totally. she's doing it right. Well, yeah, I think journalists can learn a lot, but, but I think people in general, I think Republicans in general could learn a lot from that. Really? Yeah. I think we all could. I think a lot of people on our side could learn a lot from that. Just freaking deal and grow up and get along. Like seriously, what is yeah. the deal? You can, you can disagree with people, but you can just not be a dick. <laughs> You know what I mean? Get dickety dick with, dick. Don't be a dickety dick dick. Just just get along with people. Like, what is the deal? Like, just it's okay. They don't. I mean, I like that she has 
kind of affection for him and he has affection mm-hmm. for her and they were not on the best of terms. Right. Especially. Well, and the- he clearly is still upset about that question. Yeah. You heard the, you heard that from the teaser that we played yesterday. And I loved her response to that when he was like, that was a mean question. She was like, that was an mm-hmm. awesome question. Yeah. But- and you know, there was that bickering. It was perfect. But I love how she said, but you handled it well. And like you yeah. pulled well after it and you did a great job with it. I love how she gave him props for it. I mean, mm-hmm. that's, The whole back and forth about it was great. I love it. I love how that whole thing came together and how they're, they're kind of buds now. I love that. I think that's the way a lot of us should be. I mean, it's like, if you just, you don't have to agree on everything. (laughs) Right. It's in fact, I don't agree. You, my husband and I had it like, you saw us this morning where it's, everything is stressful in my house right now. That's my husband. I, I love him more than anybody in the whole wide world. But we spar, man. I could not be <laughs> married to somebody who didn't like meet me on that. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. am not a touchy feely, like everybody has to agree with me all the time kind of person. I could not be married to somebody like that. I just couldn't. That's just the, per- that's who I am as a human being. If, <laughs> I mean, I just couldn't. If somebody was licking my butt all the time, it would drive me crazy. Like I, it's, it's a, it's just a me thing. It's, I, we disagree on a lot of things. And like, we will go toe to toe on stuff. And then at the end of the day, it's like, I love him more than any human being on the planet. So this, this is the thing. I think that people can do that. I don't know why that's a foreign concept to people. Oh, and I mean, it's it's a concept that happens in our own audience, unfortunately, a lot. So if we, you know, if somebody doesn't agree with me about Trump, or if I don't agree with Trump being, you know, the best person to be a nominee, people are like, I'm quitting your show because it's, we don't see eye to eye on that one issue, which I just think is bad. It's shit. bizarre. It, it reminds like, me, it reminds me of liberals. It's like the, when we first started our site, the, the very first person, one of the very first people that I told we were starting chicks on the right back. I remember, I will never forget it in 2009 was one of my very best friends at the time. And, um, I'll, I'll, her name is Tammy. If you're watching Tammy <laughs> and I remember, and I remember like she said, she, I remember her calling me and saying, we can't be friends anymore. Why? Well, because you're a conservative. So <laughs> it's like, I'm not the, any different than I was yesterday. Yeah. It's like, I'm the same person I was yesterday. Well, we can't be friends anymore because you're, you're doing this website and you're a conservative and you're, I was conservative yesterday. I mean, it's, it's, we were what the hell? And so she's like, well, you're out and proud about it now. We can't be friends anymore. So we're no longer going to be friends. I Crazy. mean, this is, this is the thing. So I just think people can disagree and still love one another and, and still have like fun and have really cool conversations. And I really wish we get back to that. Yeah. You know, like, I don't know that there's much hope for that, but it would be just, nice. <laughs> yeah. It'd be really great if we could do that. Um, yesterday we played a clip of, or we played surveillance footage that happened because we talked about Lauren Boebert getting kicked out of the Beetlejuice musical that she and her new Democrat boyfriend uh, were were at together. She only her her she and her team are denying uh, reports that the reason she got kicked out is because she was vaping, which you are absolutely not allowed to do in that theater. She was also like singing along like really loudly and like waving her arms around and just being sort of obnoxious. She does cop to that um and just she's blowing it off like yeah i was having a really good time sorry for like having a really good time she was also um accused of recording and like doing like all kinds of selfie whatever and just being disruptive in general so they asked her to leave she left she pulled the whole don't you know who i am card and then like gave the finger to people that were kicking her out so now there is more surveillance footage that not only proves that she was vaping, she was doing the selfie crap. And not only that, but her boyfriend grabs hold of her boob during the show. Now there's video proof. Bobert, Bobert, Bobert. Say it three times and she appears in security video from a weekend performance of Beetlejuice where the congresswoman was kicked out of the theater for being disruptive. The DCPA says she was vaping. Bobert's team denied that, said the haze was from fog machines in the show. That claim goes up in smoke when you see oh the video. Oh, my God. The pregnant woman sitting behind Bobert told the Denver Post she asked her to stop vaping, and Bobert refused. Her one-woman show continued, <sighs> taking flash photos, raising her hands and dancing, often the only one clapping or standing up in the crowd. Bobert Hi. occasionally took a break from being disruptive to enjoy the company of her male companion. He briefly had a grasp on the situation before ushers <laughs> returned. I and mean, told Bobert she had to leave. 
The theater's instant report says Bobert pulled the Don't You Know Who I Am card on the way out, Why? giving theater employees the single finger salute. Why? I'm sorry, but that woman is that's Why? just garbage behavior right there. Right. Why can't you just act like a normal human being? Oh my God. <laughs> just, just can you not act like trash? It's like got kids, like, woman. I mean, come on. I know, right? I just <laughs> and she's the only seriously everybody else around her they were like we're at a broadway show we're gonna watch the right. show why do you have to act like that what? it's just i mean just that's just you're, embarrassing. And you're a representative of people you know what right. i mean like i don't I think don't, that's gonna last for long like i i don't think she's gonna it's already looking like she will not win her re-election yeah. so i just don't know why she has to be such a trashy person but yuck Anyway, <laughs> speaking of trashy people and like super awful, obnoxious representatives, what the hell is happening with Fetterman in this clip? Basically dared House Republicans to oh, launch God. this impeachment inquiry. Now they have. Yeah. Oh, do you regret it? No, please don't do it. it it's just like those dangerous men over there, you know, the, the cheap thrills and everything. I, I don't know. It's just it's, to me, it's, it's just like the, if they got to do it, they got to do it. You are, know, are you it, it's a political loser. What? 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 what who, who? Who is that? What is I don't the second, know. Who is the second head? You guys know who the second head is? <laughs> this guy. <laughs> what God. is happening? Why is he wearing another person? Listen. <laughs> Listen, Why? I know listen, I know his brain is not okay, right? And we're not supposed to we're not supposed to poke fun at that. We're not supposed to, right? Are we not? Because I I feel like if you are a, a, a sitting senator, that it's okay to do that. Oh yeah. I feel like I am allowed to do that. I'm allowed to make fun of your brain if you're a sitting senator. Is and you're that, wearing I mean, a face. You're wearing you're wearing <laughs> another head on your body. I mean, like, what is going on? Is something somebody, is wrong? Somebody, Sherry asked if that's his tumor. It's not. <laughs> it's not a tumor, Sherry. It's not, it's a, not tumor. a tumor. <laughs> I don't seriously. What What is on limits with him? What is on and off limits? Because people tell me I'm not supposed to make fun of him because he's depressed. You know. I, yeah. Oh, well, hey, and Mike Stevens is asking, so that's okay. And Bobert is not okay. None of it is okay. Do you see how none of that can be okay all no. at the same time? <laughs> that, entire, that entire frame, what we <laughs> see right there, none of it's okay. Oh my gosh. He's up. Hey, buddy. He looks good. Yeah, he looks he a does. little sad. His eyes are really red. But he yeah. Why is his eyes so red? Well, I don't. Well, everything that's been going on. Everything is wrong. Just, everything's wrong. I what a him. sweet boy. You don't even have to flap today. You don't have to flap. You don't need to flap. You Nobody's don't have to. to oh, big yawn. Big Nobody's forcing yawn. you to flap. Nobody's forcing you. Look at the snuggler. My big boy. Oh, oh my. my Gosh, no, I get all snuggle. emotional. Oh my god. <laughs> I know. Oh my gosh. Look at what a color. you're gonna make mama emotional. I know. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um I will play you the we only have two more clips. Do you or do you wanna go? Because we don't have no, to... no, no, we're good. We're good. Are you, you sure? Play, okay, yeah, you play two more clips. You go. Okay. Well, the uh, one of them is just ridiculous thing that happened on the view yesterday that everybody's talking about. So Alyssa Farah, they were they were in the middle of a conversation where all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Whoopi Goldberg interrupts herself to ask if Alyssa Farah is pregnant on the air. It was crazy. Check this out. Barg for people. Are you pregnant? No. <laughs> oh my God. What is this in the world? You can't say that when my mother in law is here. Her like, mother in law? Why did you say that? Why do I look pregnant? Yes. I just got a. I, did you get the glow? I got. I just Please got a vibe. my tummy. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. We, it we just, it, it um, was, can we take very, bets? Can we take bets at the table? Oh my very God. Open. Oh my God. I'm very open to being pregnant soon. I am not blessed to be pregnant yet. Okay. My you, are you are sure? thinking about it. I'm They're pretty working sure. on it. I'm pretty sure. Sure. <laughs> 
I, I, forgive me. I'm just, I'm, I, you have this, I see a lot of me. I will take it. I will take it. I'll take a test when I get home just to be sure. We like okay. babies at the view. Okay. Okay. We get baby what, showers. What we need is whoopee. <laughs> Don't do well, that to the baby. Um, <laughs> but on another note, with Romney. It's <laughs> okay. Please um, is Romney, no, no, no. Is Romney pregnant? It's Romney pregnant. Right. Okay. They like babies, except for when they're unwanted. And then they're, right. all, for, then they're all for abortion. That's right. Thing. Okay, but that was completely, I mean, that's kind of inappropriate. So inappropriate. Especially, oh my God. Like, well, I mean, maybe behind closed doors, like if she would have said right. it, like, it, like that wouldn't have been inappropriate because like between friends, that's one thing. But right. when you do it on the air, completely and totally inappropriate. And oh my God. It could not have been more inappropriate. That was so freaking rude. Yeah. And now what if she is? Like, yeah. I, I mean, I guess like crazy magic props to Whoopi for like having the sixth sense about it. But like, yeah. don't say the things you can think things without saying them. Yeah. And I don't think Whoopi has figured that out because damn, that yeah. was Aly so Alyssa should have been like, are you gay? Because <laughs> you have that vibe. <laughs> you got the aura. You got the aura. Like, are, do you drive a Subaru? <laughs> do you drive a Subaru? And you're kind of, you got the thing going that on. That was just. So yeah. unbelievably mm -hmm. inappropriate on every level. Mm -hmm. I could not. I could not believe little, it. I mean, yeah. So Mike Stevens is saying, "Wait, you two have a glow too." Do we? <laughs> I can assure you. I assure you, we are not, in fact, pregnant. I don't even have the parts any longer to. Do I still have the that. parts, but it's like <laughs> my my eggs are all scrambled, <laughs> and everything is shriveled up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got the scrambled eggs. They are so uh, Shelly, thank you. Baby. Shelly says prayers for cash, prayers for baby, prayers thank for grandma you. Daisy. Just thank prayers you. all the way around thank for everyone. So Sending prayers. so much love. Oh, I just I'm soaking up all the prayers. Thank you. <laughs> All right, last clip. And then uh, we're not going to do whack or talks today um, just because she needs to she needs to spend some cash rooney time and get him sorted out. But I do have one more clip that's kind of cool um, and also bizarre as hell to share with everybody. I'm going to keep the sound off because it's just music and there's no reason to play sound. There has been a discovery on the side of a cliff hanging over the ocean in California that makes no sense, you guys. And we're just going to share it with you so you can see what's going on. Look at the size of this cliff, first of all. And there's no like immediate road around it, right? And yet look at the structure that has just been discovered perilously hanging on the side of this cliff. They're going to show a close up. In fact, I'll fast forward. What in the world? I mean, clearly this is man-made, but how and like why? And there's who? nobody li like there's not a human living in it. I mean, look, at, there's a chair. There's like a chair right there. And then they show a rope. You can see the rope on the right. And then they'll they'll kind of follow the rope up the cliff. So presumably when you follow that rope, you do end up like on a traversable half of some sort but how somebody got all of those materials down to the side of that cliff and then constructed whatever that is like what in the world it had to have been like surfer hippies that did it it had to have been look at that how it looks like it's about to collapse though i know I mean, it looks i would not want to be anywhere near that it just looks oh my god no so way not sturdy at all but look at all the stuff in there Right? I mean, there's a chair. There's like yeah. this table with a bench. Like it's, somebody had to carry all this stuff down there. I know. And all I, of it, it makes no sense. It doesn't make any sense, but it looks like the weirdest little unsturdy hoarder house I've ever seen. <laughs> it's just incredible. Climber hippies. Leanne's like, it's climber hippies. <laughs> I don't think aliens would. Rosalind, I think it looks like it's not nice enough for aliens. And this is just like off the coast, wow. I guess, of like uh, it, near San Francisco, San Francisco, like in California. Like, look at how close it is to the water. Oh, my gosh. That's I, so I nuts. just can't. And nobody knows who, if anybody currently inhabits it, who made it, why, how, nobody. And why would There's you no want to live? Why would you want to live that close to the water? Very talented <laughs> goats. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that's so great. Oh my God. Isn't that I mean, that's the most just, amazing thing? That is nuts. And then, and then some realtor is like, that's $4 million. <laughs> right. You know, that's what <laughs> it's in California. It's $4 million. Yes. Uh-huh. Oh my gosh. It's, it anyway. costs $5,000 a month to rent that. It's beautiful. That's what it's you're ocean. getting instead of talks. That should not ocean stop front. you from visiting mypillow.com slash chicks. Okay. And get you yourself guys, something nice from mypillow.com. You guys, people chicks. are really mad because I made the Subaru comment. Listen, I, I it wasn't <laughs> me that came up. Her parents have a Subaru. Okay. They're, yeah, I assure they, you. They're, well, they don't need more, gay. but they did. They did. They're not gay. I just, there's like a running joke about how Subarus are the um, cars of lesbians. Did right. you guys not know that? Total running joke. It's a running joke. I didn't make it up. I didn't start that. It's just like a, you know, I love Subarus. I always wanted a Forester. I think they're kind of cool. That's, I just, that's exactly what my parents had. And I'm not, in fact, a lesbian. I am strictly dickly, but I, you know, <laughs> dick dick. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know, I, but there is, but there's like a running. I mean, it's the same they, thing with the, the softball players, right? Like with right. female softball players, it's right. Like, but it's not, not soft- an actual mean not thing. All it's softball. Just a, right. You know, it's fine. But I've, I've actually known some softball players who were in fact straight women. <laughs> right. It's exactly. Not all of them. Right. Mm-hmm. So anyway, guys. <laughs> Debbie has an outback and she is decidedly not a lesbian. Right. And they're so. very cool. I really do like those. I really do. Anyway, you please give everybody in the insiders and local supporters. Groups I will. Updates. I will let you guys know uh, what's cash, happening. Cash, cash, cash. He's okay. He's resting comfortably, but I'll give you guys an update on what's happening. <sighs> what a day. He you doesn't guys. have to flap today at all. So we're not, and he's not going to flap. You guys, are we, we're not doing talks at all. We're not going to do no. talks. Okay. We're just going to bring no, it in. You just need to give him all the huggies. Gonna, you're going to bring it in and then him. I'm going to go take him to the vet. We're going to try to get him into A&M today. That's what we're going to yes. try to do. You guys, yes. thank you for the prayers. So appreciate it. You guys, it's Friday. Remember we start a little bit like 15 minutes later on Monday. So just remember. 745 Eastern. 645 Central. And then 445. Is that right? 445 Pacific. Is that right? Five, 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 45, 540. No. You guys are, is it 545 Pacific? What's six? 445. 445 Pacific. Yeah. I think that's right. Okay. You guys, yeah. Mwah. we will talk to you later. Talk to you on Monday. <laughs>